welcome to another video. Today I'm joined with the man Trevor, he's a Taekwondo 4th Dan Master and today we're going to be comparing some kicks with Karate and Taekwondo. So today we've got three categories that we're going to be going through, is that we're going to do the flashiest kick, we're going to do the strongest, most powerful kick and we're going to do the fastest kick. So this one's going to be a bit interesting because Karate doesn't really have as many flashy kicks as Taekwondo but Karate is more focused on sort of being grounded and powerful. Um, but what would you say is like sort of the main differences between like the two martial arts? Well, Taekwondo is known for its flashy kicks and I think that's what sort of catches people's eye to it. But people sort of underestimate how powerful Taekwondo kicks can be just through the speed that's generated. Um, especially old school Taekwondo, you know, it produces a lot of power. So yeah, it'd be good to see how my power compares to yours, but also how the, the karate technique power compares to Taekwondo power. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that one. Yeah, I mean, everyone sort of says Taekwondo and karate don't really work in real situations, but I guess you will let you make that decision after this video. Yeah, it's, 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 what, you, uh, it's what you take of it, really. You know, if you can use them in the right way, it's effective. But um, yeah, should we get into it? Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to start with the flashiest kick. Now, for Taekwondo, there's a lot of flashy kicks, but I'm going to be sort of thinking flashy Taekwondo kicks, but also effective. So, you know, for example, 540 spin kick is probably not going to be as effective as a 360 turning kick, known as a tornado kick. So we're going to look at the 360 turning kick today. Right, so the 360 turning kick, very popular in Taekwondo. And if you watch Taekwondo competitions, it's very popular too. Now with the 360, it does pose a higher risk because you're rotating, you take your eyes off the opponent for a split second, but it does have serious power. So with, with like a common question that everyone, we sort of get in the comments on that, would this be like effective in a real situation, do you think like on the street or wherever if some, someone tried to attack you or something? Well, I wouldn't use it in a street um, in, in a street fight situation. It definitely has the power, but there is obviously bigger risk. I mean, it does look like it has the power. It has the power. power. It's a powerful kick. Yeah, yeah it's a good it's kick. Just, it's just the fact that you're leaving the air and you're taking your eyes off the opponent for a split second. That's that's the risks right there. You know, you've got the risk of falling over, the risk of the opponent being able to move out of the way. But it has been landed many times in MMA fights, so yeah, it's, got, it's, it's, it's all about setting it up. It's how you set it up. So it definitely can work in a real situation. Yeah. So for karate, as I said before, there's not many real flashy kicks in karate. It's mainly just about being grounded and sort of powerful um, techniques. But I'd say the flashiest sort of one that I can think of would be the jump turning back kick. It's obviously a pretty powerful kick, um, but I think it's just flashy because of the jump. You've got a nice jump. You can get some height on it. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into that. I'm going to show you a demonstration. So in Taekwondo, we actually use the jump back as well, but where I would use it is like as a counter attack. So as someone's coming in with like a roundhouse or coming in with an attack, it's sort of counter with the jump back kick. Where would you use it in your... Yes, so I'd, I'd say it's pretty similar to that. We'd also use it as a bit of a, a counter strike. So for example, if someone is sort of rushing onto you and you, you don't really know what to do, you're sort of backing up. I'd say a good, this would be a good situation to sort of use it so you can pop straight off of these feet and come straight through with that back kick. Yeah. So I'd say that would be also be a good time to use it sort of in a defensive uh, stance as well. Yeah. So timing's important with this kick as well because Again, it has an element of risk. Timing is definitely the most important thing with that, I think. Yeah. Because if, if you time it right and it lands, it's a very dangerous kick, yeah. and obviously that would that stop a fight instantly. So I think that, that could be a very effective kick, but obviously I wouldn't go using it just you know anywhere in any situation, because obviously yeah. it, it's very risky as well with the spin, and you can't really see your opponent when you're in the air. So, you know, just if you time it right, it can be very effective, but definitely pick, choose carefully where you use it. Okay, so, sorry. No, you don't, you don't. <laughs> oh, there, 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 there. <laughs> Okay, so for the next category, which was the most powerful kick, we've actually chosen the same kick, uh, the, the back kick. There's a slight difference though, isn't there? You've chosen a slightly different variation of the back kick, if you want yes. to explain what that is. Yes, so generally, Taekwondo is fought at more distance. You know, if we're looking at distances, we're probably looking at over a meter distance apart from your opponent. You know, other arts, it'll be closer. I'm not sure about karate, I assume it'll be a little bit closer because you incorporate punches as well. A bit closer, yeah. So we need to think of ways to close distance as well. Um, one of my favorite kicks to do that and the kick that I generate the most power 
from was a one step back kick. So you throw the back kick, but you add a step before. The step isn't just a standard walking step, it's, it's also to build up momentum and speed. You know, more speed you've got, generally the more power you've got going into the kick. So we'll show you both of ours and they're gonna look similar, but we'll sort of explain why we'd use it and, and where we'd use it and what situation and stuff. Yeah, so this is, I've chosen this, a back kick as well, but with mine it's just like you come straight from the stance and you throw the back kick straight away without the step. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, the, the power difference between the two. I think the, the step in Taekwondo is, is very good for generating a quick bit of power. Mm. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see the differences and we'll, uh, we'll let you decide. So if you want to put in the comments so far which, which kick you think is your favourite or which one you would prefer, you know, which style you like the best. And uh, yeah, I'll be reading through those. So will Trevor, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Cool. Final category, which is looking at speed. If you can throw a fast kick, it's going to land more often. Yeah, just like the jab in boxing will land more often because it's just a faster, more efficient punch. So in Taekwondo, generally anything from the front leg is going to be pretty quick. Because we've got quite a side on stance, the front leg is a lot closer to the opponent. I think that is the difference actually, because yes. Taekwondo is, is, as you said, very side on. So like the quickest thing would literally just be pick, pick up that leg. The front leg. Whereas with karate, the stance is more more sort of frontwards, so square square on. I mean, it's not completely, but a little bit more than Taekwondo, so it'd be a bit longer to, because you have to twist your hips right, yeah. and come back up, so whereas it'd be a lot, lot quicker there, because you take out the hip movement that you have to do, so. The big, biggest difference is, is where are you throwing the shot from? You know, what stance position? So for the Taekwondo, we've, we've gone for, or I've gone for the pick-up turning kick. Cool. You've gone for? I've gone for the front kick, which is, Again, something to do with the stance, because you've got such a square on stance, the front kick is the quickest one to pull straight through. Straight through, there's no, no extra movement needed. You just pull the front straight through and snap it back off. So yeah, that's why I've gone for the front kick. When, when you put it against sort of Muay Thai front kicks, which is more like a push kick, this one snaps back off. It's more like a punch with your foot. Yeah. So this one, you make a quick impact and you bring it straight back off again, which is where it differs from like, like Muay Thai and that, where it's sort of more like a push. Yeah, more direct, so I think yeah. th this is why this is the fastest kick, because no one can really see it coming, because it comes straight from behind. So nice. we'll get into some demonstrations. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. So the key to having a fast pickup turning kick is really about the start of the kick and driving your knee up nice and high. This is where most tend to struggle in terms of picking up speed with their kicks. Now, in Taekwondo and also Karate, a lot of the emphasis is on a nice tight chamber position, so bringing that knee up nice and high. So with this pickup turning kick, what I'm not looking to do is swing my leg up straight or fairly straight. I'm looking to really drive this knee up nice and high. So I'm looking to pump this knee up, nice and tight to my body, and then what I can do is extend my leg as it comes up into position and it creates a nice fast snap motion. So here, it comes up, extend it out, rather than swinging it straight up. You'll be able to get a lot more speed in that and also a lot more sort of variety. So you could throw a turning kick, or a hook kick, or a side kick, or two turning kicks. So yeah, a lot more variety from pumping this knee up nice and high, and then extending the kick. All right, so the reason I've chosen the front kick is because it's from A to B is one of the smallest movements possible. As in, you don't need to do any added hip movement. You know, you don't need to twist your hips first before you kick. It just comes straight from behind. So from here, all you do is you lift that heel and you bring that knee forwards, drive it up and snap it off again. And uh, that's why it's so effective because it's, it's hard to see coming. So if you're if you're sparring with someone or you're you know in the street or whatever. It's hard to see it coming if you, if you don't um, telegraph it in, in any way. It's come straight from, straight from behind. So that's why it's such a difficult kick to block. And the power and speed comes from the hip movement. So you obviously tuck the heel up, and then once you come to this point, you pop the hip upwards. And that's what makes it so fast, is just that pop of the hip. So you're here, you're just like, there. And it's also a very powerful kick. Um, Obviously not as powerful as the back kick, but it's very good for a quick impact strike. You're just pulling it right off their body again. So you know, it's, it's sort of, it's as fast as a punch really. And that's quite impressive to say about a kick, is if it's as fast as a strike with your hands, then you're doing well. 
Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Just drop down uh, which styles you prefer, whether Taekwondo or Karate. I know they're very similar styles actually. Like, um, as we've been training together, we've sort of realised that a lot of the stuff is, is very similar. Yeah. Like the way the way kicks are thrown, um, there's just a few differences. You know, Taekwondo is just more light on its feet, um, Karate is more grounded. But other than that, they're, like, they're quite similar, aren't they? They are quite similar. And it's, it's also remembering that you've got to use arts and strikes to complement each other. It's not, you know, this art versus that art all the time. You know, take a little bit of karate, take a little bit of taekwondo and try and figure out what, what would be best for you. I, I personally started doing a bit more Muay Thai and my stance has changed a lot more uh, through adding Muay Thai and taekwondo together. So yeah, find out what, what suits you best. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed and uh, thank you for having me on the video. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's been a good video. And yeah, just instead of comparing styles, let's just get together and appreciate all the styles. Like, that is, one's not better than the other. Again, it's all about the practitioner. So yeah, just enjoy whatever you're doing. Don't let anyone sort of pull you down and say that your martial art doesn't work. Because you know, believe me, we've, we've had that plenty of times in the comments just saying, you know, what we're doing is rubbish. But you know, just don't, don't listen to any, any haters, basically. Yeah, 100%. Keep it positive and uh, enjoy your training.